Hello you dirty wastelanders, today I'm just going to go through all the highlights and details of update 19 which rolled out for Fallout 76 today. Brief oversight of what we'll be going through, first is ally customization, very requested one, a new event, a returning event, item naming update, backpack updates and nuclear winter challenges. So the first feature they want they're promoting and obviously because it's the most requested one. Starting today you can now share your wardrobe with your allies and swap their outfits to your heart's content with ally customization. I have seen this so many times on reddit of people moaning that they want to change uh, Sophia's silly space person outfit. Outfits, headwear, costumes, armour, if you can wear it then so can your ally. Uh, you still can't use power armour or weapons, although there's a glitch for weapons which I might cover in another video. So anything that you dress your ally in is purely cosmetic, they won't benefit from any buffs if it is armor. Additionally now when you view another player's ally it will come up not just as their name it will say the player's name and then that ally's name. So if it was mine it would be Holy Atom Cat Sophia. If you decide to scrap the ally station while your ally has some customized clothes on you will lose them customized clothes and they'll go back to their normal outfit. We then have an event turning up called Hunt for the Treasure Hunter. Very creative name, I, d I don't know where they've plucked that from. More miners are searching for riches around Appalachia, you can hunt them down to claim their loot for yourself in a new series of limited time, Hunt for the Treasure Hunter. Use your keen tracking senses to hunt down treasure hunter mole miners to collect their mole miner pals. These contain all of the loot that they've been hoarding. Treasure hunter mole miners are legendary creatures and you'll hear them when they're nearby. Now when they're legendary, will they just drop Pails, are these pails going to be counted as legendary items or will they stop drop, still drop legendary weapons? Because that, that's very handy. These treasure hunter mole miners can drop rewards from three different tiers. The dusty mole miner pail, which is a low quality gift, essentially. You've got mole miner pails, which is just the standard me medium quality. And then we have ornate mole miner pails, which is high quality rare gear. These will include outfits, mounted head plans, a new backpack plan, and the marine armor helmet. My god, has that been requested on Reddit? Enough. Pails can be traded and sold to other players, but cannot be sold to NPC vendors. Also, you can craft your own, much like the gifts at Christmas time where you bought the wrapping paper. From NPCs, you can buy empty mole miner pails in exchange for cat. These will require a few additional materials and then you can choose to create a low, medium or high quality mole miner pail. You can give or sell crafted pails to other players or keep them for yourself, doesn't matter, but again, cannot sell them to vendors. This event will start May 21st and continue to May 25th in the Ash Heap region of Appalachia. And they've also stated that in the future there will be different regions with different enemies that this will occur and so it's just another way to rerun this gift I like mechanic. The Fashnat Parade marches back to Helvetia. Starting next week, you can travel back to Helvetia to take part in the Fashnat seasonal event by helping local protectorons prepare for the town's annual celebration and parade. You simply just got to help the bots by hanging decorations, gathering ingredients for a feast, or playing musical instruments. Pretty easy stuff, among other activities, and you are timed on this. If you are successful in this, the bots will then line up in the centre of town ready to begin the parade. You have to successfully guide the marchers to the end of the parade route and you will be rewarded with loot. I'm assuming when you march them to the end of the parade route, you'll be ambushed by enemies. The more marchers that survive, the higher your chances of rare loot, which may include themed camp plans and a chance to earn a fancy mask that we all know about. We've added a number of festive new masks this year and adjusted their drop rates following community feedback. Basically everyone moaned that they weren't dropping enough and were too rare. So Bethesda has bent over once again and gone, yep, we'll just give one to everyone. Fat Snap Parade will begin every hour at the top of the hour, starting on May 25th. This event will last for a full week. So yep, as soon as the Mole Miner event stops, this will start on May 25th. And last for a week. We then have improvements with automatic item naming. So now when you mod a weapon and put skins on it, it will actually change its name. I think it was always supposed to, it just didn't. So items should now generally follow this naming convention in this order. Primary legendary attribute, 
plus its atomic shop cosmetic name, plus the mod name, plus the we weapon name. So say I had a Gauss pistol, um, I put a suppressor on it, it is a bloodied Gauss pistol, and it's got the clandestine uh, weapon paint on it. It would be called a bloodied clandestine suppressed Gauss pistol. You, you can obviously still give your weapons custom names. Um, they put a bit here that says, please note, given the many combinations that are possible through all the different mods, legendary effects, atomic shot paints and item types, there may be cases where new item names appear incorrect. I hate this. First bit they've gone, look at this, look at what we've done. And then they've gone, but it, it, it's probably not going to work. All right, just have a bit of confidence in what you're doing. We've improved the backpack customizations that you can now apply different appearances to your backpacks as skins. Very happy about this. It's very annoying that if you wanted to change the skin of your backpack, you would have to craft a new backpack. It doesn't cost, cost a lot of materials, granted, but it was still annoying. You can now add skins to the small backpack as well. Which, you know, it makes sense. It's just a skin. The small backpack is the same model as the normal backpack. So it's about bloody time they've done that. A couple of little fun tweaks they've made. Barbecue grills will now show you as flipping burgers. Or, sorry, um, steak. Also, if you have Grognak's throne in your camp, there's a new animation for when you sit in it, rather than the normal generic throne animation. They've also considered that the Liberty Prime power armor it looks really awesome, but some players might not want it to constantly blurt out random shit all the time. So they've made it so you can now craft a version of it that does not talk to you. It is silent. They've added some new things into Nuclear Winter, trying to keep that alive as long as they can. They've added eight new challenges, which you have to do in order. These are starting today, right now. They are live, and they will be lasting until June the 11th. Right now, a new challenge will drop once a day, and then, but after a challenge has dropped, they will stay till June the 11th. So do not worry about them disappearing in order. The first challenge will be unlocked with 150 Overseer XP, with the last one eventually making 2500 XP. It states here that all other challenges will require 2000 XP. What? That's quite a jump from 150 to 2000. These challenges also must be completed one at a time. For completing these new challenges, you'll be able to claim new themed rewards, like new furniture for your camp, survivors denim and ghillie suit outfits, that is something I might actually try and go for is the ghillie suit, that sounds pretty cool. And as well as skins for the new weapons in Nuclear Winter, the bow, the kettle prod and the gauss shotgun. Which leads on to the next bit. They have added them three weapons into Nuclear Winter. Just them three have been balanced for it right now. I guess they'll be working on the rest of the new weapons soon. So obviously they've waited to do all the bug fixes for Wastelanders with this update which they probably shouldn't have done. They should have probably done a bug fix very quickly after Wastelanders, but they've tortured us a little bit and it's here now. So I'm just gonna flash all the bug fix fixes on screen for you. You can pause it if you're actually interested in them. Once again, thank you so much for watching another video. If you'd like to hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on, that'd be much appreciated. I'm so close to 100 subscribers now, it's unreal. This last 10 is really killing me. It's taken so long. And um, up when I hit 100, I'm allowed to reward myself with a with a pizza. So that, that that's enough reason for you to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.